Today we will implement background sync with service worker. So let's start the video. Hi everyone, this is Subhat and you are watching Fun of Heuristics. So on this channel, you will get to know about the programming languages, the framework and all about the algorithm. So please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon if you haven't yet. So first we will discuss what is background sync. And as the name says, it will sync to a server in the background. So that's a simple definition. So we will go now and try to implement the same. To implement the background sync, we will going to use the vanilla JavaScript. So for that, we need to change something here. So I will go here and I will create a file as a service worker.js. And here, first we will import our service worker file which is generated by Angular so that it will handle all the things what, what we have seen till now. And after that, we can create an event listener for the sync. So if you remember, you can write like this. In the first video, we have done this. So you can write add event listener and this will be our sync. And that event will going to catch here. So we'll just change, rename it to service worker.js. And now what will happen is it will try to register the service worker.js as a service worker and and in turns we are importing our ngswworker.js so that it will work same as previous with a extra event as a sync and here we can get the tag from an event so in sync or in an event you can raise an event with a particular tag so you will a receive that tag so suppose you want to post a message you want to delete a message you want to uh, uh, send send someone a, a comment or, or put a comment then at that time you, you can generate different different type of tags and th those tags you can uh, listen here and you can take action according to that so for now we will create only one tag okay so we'll read event dot tag post data so we'll give the name of the tag as a post data in from from our code so here we will call a method in this method we will going to call the api where which you want to be as a background synced okay so i will save this one now we will go to our app component.ts so here I will create a method and in this video we will only be focused on the background sync and we will not focus on the index DB and that is used for saving the data. Suppose you want to send a user object to your backend when the user click on send then at that time user doesn't have the internet connection and when the internet connection came back now how this service worker will get your user object. And that is possible by using your index DB. And that we're going to see in the future videos. But for today, we will going to hard code the value to see only how background sync works. And we'll write a method as a background sync. So here we'll access the service worker from the navigator. So the navigator dot service worker and we'll just ready dot then. So if you hover over ready you, you can see it's a promise of service worker registration so if the service worker is ready to be registered and we'll grab the event that is sw registration and we'll try to register our sync event with in tag name so i'll just do the register and if you remember our tag name was post data so i'll just copy this one here so here we have registered our event as post data and here you can cast the error as well suppose the user uh, doesn't have the permission or the background sync is blocked by the OS level then you can do the same here I'm just logging the value now we will go to the, our post sync method and from, from, from here we will call our uh, post call so for now I have created a dummy post API so this, this is the same file we have used in the previous video that is push notification and if you haven't watched the push notification please go ahead and watch that it's pretty useful in every PW application so I will link the video in the card you, you can go and watch that one 
So here what we are doing is we have imported express course body parts are the, the basic things and I have exposed a post service as it slash data and here we are just printing the value to see the request came. So I will start the server here. I'll write nodemon. So we'll go back to the angular here. So here we will call that API call. So this dot HTTP dot post and in the post we'll write the URL and for now we'll pass a object and the object will be we pass the object now we'll subscribe to this one and on success response on error we will going to call this method so what we are doing here is if you if the user will have internet connection then we will going to call a normal angular http call but if the user doesn't have a connection or the somehow the internet connection is lost then we will going to make a background sync call and which will in turn going to make a call when the user will have internet access and for a note you can use this background sync call always okay so as i just told you previously you can save your user object to the index db and from the index db you, you can fetch those data in the in the service worker file like here you can fetch those data and you can make a call so what will happen is you just triggered a sync event with the post data and at that time if the user will have internet connection then it will go ahead and make a connection to the user and you will get your data for current scenario we are going like uh, first what i'm doing is i'm making a normal angular http client call if that fails then we are registering our post data means our sync data tag i will save this code here now we'll go to our service worker so here now I think the things will be a little clear now here you have created a, a data called post data means a tag called post data and that tag we are checking it here and if the tag is same then we will going to do something so we'll just create a function as add data and in that we're going to call the server so here in ideal scenario you you will use index db that we'll going to see in the upcoming videos but for today we will going to create an object same object as we are doing it here so i will add the object here and if you remember in the previous video also i told you that uh, from the service worker you can't call a angular http client call all a service worker will only work on fetch request so we're going to make a fetch request okay so we'll just uh, copy the url also so we're going to call the same url because as we are hitting with the uh, data tag and here we'll pass our method and the method here is a post call now we need to pass the header the headers will be now in the headers we have content type as a json because we are sending the json and now we'll send the body and the body will we need to stringify those values so we'll just this on the stringify and we'll pass our object here and to stringify the value and we'll just call the method so here we need to call this method from here so for that we can write this one so the event will wait until it will get resolved so it will going to wait means suppose you call the server and it got succeed then this will get a resolve value so that it will it will not going to retry again but if this method is going to reject then it will try to retry after some time when the user will get the connection so for that if this method or means this add data need to be a return type of promises and that we can do inside dot then we can return promise dot resolve and according to requirement what is needed so it, as we have a pretty simple scenario 
so what what I am doing is I am just returning promise dot reject here okay so if this call pass then it going to return promise dot resolve and if it fails then it will going to return promise dot reject now if you see if our add data will going to return promise if that is resolved then it will not going to retry it again if that fails then it will going to retry again till it pass with some interval according to internet connection so i will save this this file then we'll go to our app component so here we need to call this method so i will go to the html file and i will add a button So now we'll go and build our application. So I go ng build hyphen hyphen prod. And here, one more thing is if you go here, you can see that service worker dot register as service worker dot js. I have put the service worker dot js file here, but it will not be added to our build package. What I will do is I will copy paste this service worker dot js to our build file. So let it build once, then I will show you what to do. The build is finished. Now we will go here and check that the service worker file is not there. So I will just uh, copy the file here. Then we'll go to the Angular PW and paste this file. If you just click here, and uh, if you can see it's from PWA, now it, it will try to access dot slash ng service worker JS and which is present here. So in the same directory, so now it can access that file and it can load the service worker. So now we'll go inside the dist folder and to the our application and we'll start our server. And now I will start in a different server like around uh, 4300 localhost 4300 you can see it is asking for notification because in the previous video we have implemented that and it's the same file we are using so i will just allow that one and you can see also we got the endpoint and all that you will be clear uh, if you if you have watched the previous video now if i go to the application and here you can see that we our service worker is registered with the new service worker js file and here you can go and see our code now i will go and hit the push data button and here you can see that we got the response in our server and we got we log the value so now we'll go to our application now i will make this one as offline and you can see the see this one this we used in lot in the previous videos so what the offline will do is it will block your request from the browser to the server. So in server, our case is our local data. And in the real scenario, you will don't have the internet connection because I'm using the local host. So if I disconnect my network also, it will going to hit because it's both in the same machine. So now I will go and hit the post data. You can see that we got an error that 544 gateway timeout and one more thing is instead of calling it every time as a background sync from here you can check the status code as a gateway timeout and if that is gateway timeout means 504 then call the background sync just keep an eye on the server whenever i will press online you will get the response from the client so i will do the same thing again so i will just hit the offline and i put the data now you can see we got uh, a second post log error here now we'll go to the application so this is now thing like that user is sending a comment putting a like and at that time he or she doesn't have the internet connection so when they will uh, have the internet connection back so here what i'm doing is i'm not able to close the browser because uh, i both are in the local host so if, if you if i will host this 
this Node.js server in, in, in the cloud, then if I close the application, if I close the browser also, and if I switch on my net, then also it will going to work the same because it's the service worker and it's running in background. So now I will remove the offline means now it will be online for the service worker. You just, you can see, you just, you, you can keep an eye on the console and the node file. We will going to get a response whenever I will remove the offline. Now we got the response and that's what the magic and that's what the benefit of background sync in service worker. So we saw what is a background sync and how it's work and how awesome it is. And in the next video or next videos, we will going to cover the index DB and the background fetch. The index DB I already explained you so that you can store your data and you can access the data in your service worker. And the background fetch is uh, downloading the files in the background. Suppose you are downloading some file in, in your browser. If, if the user close the browser or user close the application, then it will going to download in the background like it's happened for the native app. So that's it for today guys. Today we saw what is background sync and how to implement that one. And I think it's pretty useful. You can use it various way. There will be various scenario to, to use background sync in each and every application or each and every PWA. So please hit the like button if you are liking the video till now and please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you will not miss any video in the future. And please share this video among your friends, family, colleague, so that they also can will know what is background sync and how to use that in their applications. And please give some valuable comment in the comment section below. We will going to meet in the next video. Till that, stay happy. Bye bye.